Just a friendly reminder that the opinions expressed on this show are not worth a Canadian penny, so disregard anything you hear that might get anyone in trouble. And despite some of the great ideas you may hear, don't try them at home. Go to friend's house instead. And welcome to Slam Fire Radio. This is episode 504 for April 26th, 2023. I'm one of your hosts, Adriel. Dave. Dave. I'm one of your hosts, Next. Random Dave. I'm another host, Kyle. And I'm another host, Mo. There we go. We got all of us in there. Dave. 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 We're happy There's to have. Uh, is it going to be angry, Dave? We have, we're happy to have Dave right. on. Is there other kind of Daves? I'm never, really, angry, Dave, I'm never really angry. I'm just more disappointed with the universe. And our government. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really get angry about things. Just, really the, the, just the universe, Dave? Just the universe. Okay. Just never really get angry, but you might be spitting at your microphone today when we get into the news. <sighs> we're not going to talk about that um, stuff, are we? <laughs> you know what? When I, when, I, when I see these things and I read about them, my trick, I learned this from a guru, taught me that the trick to inner peace and happiness is to picture yourself when you're really mad, you're upset with somebody, you just picture yourself by the edge of a stream. It's a beautiful stream. There's trees by the edge of the stream. There's maybe a deer wandering by. You're sitting on the edge of the stream on the rocks and you're holding the person's head underwater until the bubbles <laughs> stop coming up. And just enjoying the wow. feeling of the breeze on your face. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Namaste. 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 Yeah. yeah. Sounds like a very peaceful time. Bubble, bubble, bubble. <laughs> Namaste. <laughs> no bubbles. Beautiful. Uh, Dave, do you want to start us off with what you did in guns this week? Uh, what the hell did I do? Oh, I've been... Uh, a couple weeks. I've, yeah, it's been a couple weeks. I've been uh, doing some dry fry practice with my Tavor since I actually, after three years of owning it, went out and fired it. So I, uh, I'm... I want to hate it, but I don't hate it. So, yeah, I don't know. I want to hate it, but I, I can't hate it. So I think I think I kind of like it. So, um, yeah, I've been practicing dry fire and mag changes with that. Mag changes are horrible, um, just awful. So I'm trying to get that a little quicker. And then uh, uh, we had our first ORA day out at the ranges uh, two Saturdays ago. That was a pl practice and plinking day. So I had a bunch of people come out for that. And uh, it was absolutely beautiful. So if you ever want to come out to any of the ORA, Ontario Rifle Association events, if you're in our neck of the woods, southern Ontario, uh, we have them up on practice score right now. If you just search for ORA, you'll find all the different events we have listed. So that was really good. And, Did you um, shoot at that event? No. No, I very seldom shoot events. I'm, I'm usually running them. But Chris is saying you have to challenge DD, disappointed Dave, to start shooting last time. <laughs> last few times I was with him at the range, he refused. Oh, shut up, Chris. I was our own. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Mind I don't like Chris, shooting. Chris W. there uh, is one of our, our RSOs in training. So Chris was out for the day as well okay. to uh, job shadow and had him running the radio. So thank you, Chris. You did an excellent job and didn't F things up, which is good. Uh, so I have high hopes for you. And I'll be at the range with Chris this Sunday, actually, because it's our uh, first intro day of the year. So we get uh, we get a bunch of uh, new shoot newish shooters, or sometimes it's just people that want to come out and shoot guns at uh, 300 yards. And we do a classroom in the morning where we teach a little bit of the history and the different things that the ORA does and how to be safe and whatnot. And then we go out and we uh, engage some targets at 300 yards for the afternoon. So I'm going to be uh, going to be doing that with Chris, and I'm going to bring my Tavor out as well. Just everybody that that uh, traditionally teaches this, they tend to bring out the ORA guns, which are all bolt action savages. So, I mean, they're nice rifles, but meh. And a couple of years ago, uh, somebody was complaining that nobody ever came out from CQB or, or a service rifle and brought their kit out. So myself and our service director brought our AR-15s out and guess who on the range had the biggest lineup behind the guns to shoot them? 
not the bolt guns. <laughs> or hairs are way cooler. No, Dude, absolutely. If you like, if That's you haven't kid, shot a lot, lot show up to yeah. the range. Do you want to shoot this bolt, like this hunting rifle, or do you want to shoot an AR-15? Oh, AR oh yeah. Time. yeah. F, yeah. Yeah. So it'll be uh, it'll be good with the Tavor. And you know what? It's a, it's a lot of younger people that come out. That's the kind of stuff they want to play with anyway, right? They're they're the Call of Duty people. They want to play with the cool guns. So it was really good. So yeah, I'll bring the Tavor out this weekend and uh, yeah, help out with the clinic and see how it goes. Should be fun. Cool. Yeah, Adriel, what have you been up to? Three gun match. I fit it in. Nice. Had to do a bunch of driving, and I was like, ah, I don't really know if I want to do it. But then Thomas is like, I'm driving. So I'm like, oh, fuck, I'm going then. <laughs> <laughs> Had to do a bunch of driving the day before, and he said he's driving. I'm in. So uh, it was good. It was a good match. Um, had a really like rough start to it. Uh, start of the day was like not that great. My pistol shooting was horrible. Oh, my God, horrible. And... Uh, <laughs> I need to brush up on that. You know, you, you, I don't want to say like I lean too much on my, on my gun or the technology to, to kind of save my ass, but uh, I was getting kind of slappy with the trigger on my pistol and it was showing up mm. in the accuracy. Mm. Uh, the other thing that hurt me. So we've got like a, a new Texas star at Sherwood park and it's a little bit hard to knock the plates off of it. And uh, I was shooting it with 124 grain bullets, but the powder charge is a little bit light, like 3.8, 3.7 grains, a tight group. Just a little bit light, right? And uh, it wasn't knocking them over. <laughs> I was like, bing, bing, bing. I'm like, ah! <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, uh, good, no recoil. Good, good information. Good, oh, yeah, the recoil's better, but good information. <laughs> so the next time I'm shooting that target, I'm going to run factory ammo. Something that's got yeah. a little bit more spunk in it. Uh, yeah, it was good. a fantastic match, though. Uh, less people, and uh, therefore we got more shooting in and uh, more stages in, so... Uh, and and the stage design was really good. The guys who ran the stage design basically set it up so it's like we set up the walls at the start of the day, and the walls just stayed there, and we just designed stages around them, and uh, we didn't have to like the the efficiency of resets was uh, and and rebuilds for the stages was really good. So nice, that was all fantastic. Uh, listener and Maple Seed instructor, let me know that there were some primers at Tenda that are very cheap, and uh, I bought some. Mm. They have the uh, Cam Pro slash Giant X uh, cheapos. They had small pistol and small rifle, right around 90, 80 to eighty to ninety bucks per thousand for both. So uh, if you're looking for those, I have it in the new gun stuff. But uh, go buy some from them because that pricing is fantastic. And I got the free shipping. I bought four thousand primers and instead of getting nailed on like toxic hazardous. Uh, blow up nuclear fission materials. <laughs> They're just like, nah, free shipping. Don't worry about it. So, oh, right. nice. yeah, of course, I'm going to get that. Yeah, so uh, got a bunch of those. Uh, I think they're going to be here Friday. Yeah, they'll be here Friday. Nice. So I guess I got some more rifle reloading to do. <laughs> uh, I booked some more maple seeds. So there's some more up on the website now. Uh, and I am continuing to book some more got a ladies day one in white court that we're going to be doing i got a couple in drum heller that i'm just getting nailed down and uh i gotta i gotta book some camping sites for for some of them because i got one in kananaskis i gotta book a camping site for so i should do that right away because well the camping sites nearby are all booked so now i'm booking stuff that's like a 45 minute drive away from the range uh, and that's as close as i can get uh, and speak it all, I got the, I got all the maple seed stuff on right now because I'm um, squaring away my kit because I've got a double header maple seed this weekend. Uh, that'll be at Chaz and Sherwood park. This is my first of the year. It's going to be like 20 to 25. Nice. Uh, I'm going to burn just like, flat <laughs> I'm going to burn. There's no way around it. I'll try to remember the sunblock. I'll apply the sunblock. It won't matter. I'm going to burn. <laughs> Just gonna happen. And yeah, but just I, I I pulled up my spreadsheet, so I'm looking through my checklist of stuff that I gotta like pack up and and kind of make sure that I've I've got everything. Uh, oh, I need to check the batteries in my laser rifle. I should probably recharge those. Laser we do rifle. like yeah laser in Maple Speed. Oh, we there's a pulse width <laughs> modulated five gigawatt range. No, it's a uh, it's a it's a laser pointer on a uh, on a mm. stock. 
and we use it to show the effect of like breathing and uh, NPOA in Maple Seed. It's the uh, light and uh, sound portion of the show. And uh, yeah, I've got to I got to make sure that the light part of that's going to work. I always bring like two lasers just in case one breaks, but I, uh, I need to make sure that those charges are uh, good to go. And uh, that's about it. I'm going to be at the range uh, every weekend until fall. So that's going to be, uh, yeah, my year is, is, is uh, rapidly starting to get completely booked up. Uh, Kyle, what about you? Well, I did not make it up to Roswell for their USPSA match, but I did. There was a sporting clay match here in Carlsbad on Saturday. So I went and took that in. There was a 100 target main, and then they had a 50 target super sport and a 50 target five stand. So it was fun. It was a little, it was windy, but uh, good end of that. Sh- What's that, Dave? That's a lot of shooting. Yeah, yeah, 200 targets. So, I uh, ended up shooting 55% in the main, and which is still like kind of right at where my average is right now. Uh, and then I shot 72% in the shoot in the yeah, the super sporting and 70% in the five stand, which normally I absolutely hate five stand, but I figured I'd what the heck I'd try it. And uh, maybe they just set it up differently here because. We did two strings, so the first string was 25, and then the second string, we went through all five stands again, and right up until the last pair, I had only dropped two shots on the second string, and then, of course, I dropped the last pair. (laughs) (laughs) But, uh, yeah, all around good day. Met a couple good guys that were, well, one's from Carlsbad, one's from Artesia, and they go up and shoot in Artesia all the time. But uh, it was a tough weekend for match turnouts. Because I checked on Roswell and their USPSA match had like five shooters. And then no. we had nine shooters at this sporting clay match. So, huh. yeah. Where is everybody? There, well, there there actually was a couple. Of, like There was Texas Multi-Gun Championship last weekend. There was uh, Dragon's Cup down in Midland going on, which is a pistol, big pistol match. So I think a lot of people were... Either at that or just, I don't know. So, oh, I'm surprised to hear that they, they, can, yeah. they can't draw bigger numbers. Well, you're gonna, I think you're going to have weekends like that, especially when there's big matches going on in, hmm. in the area. Like Texas uh, th- three gun was about six and a half, six, six and a half hours for me. But uh, yeah, I just couldn't make the trip out there for that one. But uh, yeah. You're spoiled and... for choice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice problem. Well, and then this weekend, well, Thursday, tomorrow, I have a, another club meeting because we have a steel challenge on Saturday here in Carlsbad. So, so yeah, it'll be good. Go out early Saturday morning, help set up, and go shoot steel challenge. It's been a long time since I shot steel challenge, so it'll be interesting. Last time I shot Steel Challenge was at Spruce Grove with Raz when I first started shooting three guns. So. Well, they're, they've got a Steel Challenge this Thursday night for the fun shoot. I'm considering whether to go or not. After my dismal pistol performance at the last match, I don't really want to go, but maybe I should. <laughs> That's how you yeah. get better. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I'm very competitive. I don't like losing. Yeah. A little well, not I showing might... up would guarantee that, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think I might actually enter a second pistol. Like I'll shoot my STI for limited, but I might put, bring out the uh, Zev and shoot an optic and nice. see how that goes. I mean, cool. they're they're cheap matches, and actually, I'm gonna buy buy my membership for the Cavern City Action Shooters there tomorrow night. It's 120 bucks for the year, and then that all covers all my match fees. So, oh really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So every match in Carlsbad after I buy my membership first i get a key to the target shed so if i'm out there i can pull out some props or whatever and use them for training and then yeah all my match fees are paid nice so. uh, mike yeah. hynix says go fast don't suck that's how you get better thank you mike yeah. i'm glad I, you came out for that expert I advice agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> there you go, Andrew. Real simple. <laughs> yep. Problem solved. Yeah. But uh, that's a. Oh, it did. I tried to go write my driver's test so I can actually start buying some stuff. But uh, even though they had five empty computers, I still had to make an appointment to go write my actual written test. <laughs> so. Uh, tis the, uh, well, their version of the MTO. So that's not shocking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, that's it for me. So how about you, Mo? Uh, I had a rimfire uh, weekend. So on Saturday, I went to uh, the uh, Rimfire Competition <coughs> Academy that was in Avonmore, Ontario. And it was uh, hosted by Rick of Maple Seed fame. And that uh, he's also very involved in the uh, CRPS or RPS world. And it was a full day of instruction. It was really good. And uh, we got a nice weather day, too. It was it was on the windy side, but it was still sunny and somewhat warm. Um, I met um, I met Jay from Red Leaf Rimfire. Uh, that, that was uh, – he's been on our show before. And uh, I met him there, really great guy. Uh, we had good instructors, too, besides Rick. Uh, Matt from Wanfat was there, and there was also some other top shooters, and uh, they were giving us tips and stuff. So we would get some, like, instruction, and then we'd get on the line and, and do some either prone shooting to see our, where we were hitting and uh, and then off actually off of a prop. And uh, we worked on fundamentals, trajectory, and calling wind. It's obviously the three keys to – to getting better in that sport. And um, I know it was a great, it was a great day. And, and uh, it was like, I have to mention that like the car, the fee was actually zero because it was sponsored by Vortex and, and Voodoo Gunworks. So they, they, they covered everybody's uh, through sponsorship. They covered everybody's uh, event fee. So oh, that's so great. cool. Nice. Yeah, yeah, I know. And they, there was like a lot of giveaways and stuff. Like, you know, I got a hat and some other goodies and stuff. So it was pretty nice. And and then obviously a ton of instruction. And then uh, Matt gave me some good pointers um, because I was holding my, you know, from the Ipsic world, I was holding my, I have a pistol grip on my rifle and I had my my thumb wrapped around as if I'm holding a pistol and he, and, and that rifle actually has a thumb rest on the right side right on the shooting side so he was encouraging me to keep my thumb on that side and just have it supported there and i found just i just had to practice a little bit and then i found it was it was more comfortable to actually keep it that way another thing he was like encouraging me to do is like the follow through on the trigger presses so i was working on that again i guess with ipsic i try to like i'm pulling off the trigger a little bit more than than holding it for that you know for that for that shot and um well yeah it's like you're trying to reset that trigger yeah you're trying to reset so so i think that's even with the thumb like the wrapped around it's all part of the pistol shooting versus like Mm. you know competition rifle right so yeah yeah, no overall it was like a great day i got i got a lot a lot out of it uh we worked with uh, the geo ballistics app um i have a kestrel so i plan on using that for my matches and i did that on the next day too um but it's also another you know another tool that that, that we can use and then the next day was the actual crps match was at the same location so i went back there and uh it was supposed to be a pretty rainy day and it turned out it was just more like on, on and off and more of a of a light rain and um and we'll talk about it more when our main guest is on so i don't want to give too much too many of the details uh, but for highlights for me, I made. I think I did better than the kids wise. I think I did better than the NRS match I attended, as which was my first one. Um, so I was happy with that. Uh, I made some actual long shots that I was pretty pleased with. And uh, but there was one stage that I know was a learning experience. So there, it was. Uh, so we were set up in the prone position off a trailer, we got to stage the rifle prehand. So you would start standing and then your rifle's already on the ground and you jump in and start shooting. It was three targets at, I think 120 yards, three, three small squares. I don't know if they're like four inch squares. And in my head, I'm thinking, okay, this is a gimme stage for me. Like in terms of not that I'm good that, you know, I'm going to get, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to get points here because in the prone position, I'm as solid as I'm going to be. I got my little support bag, you know, under the, the buttstock. I'm going to like, I'm going to nail these little squares and I pull the trigger 
and I don't hear impact. I don't hear the ping. And I'm like, okay. And then I should have like, what you're supposed to do is make some sort of adjustment because obviously something went bad. And then I just, it was nine shots off the three, uh, you know, it was nine shots. And I just kept missing and missing and missing and missing. And I'm like, clearly there's something wrong. So then I saw, I actually, uh, cause Matt, one fat Matt was there and he did a video on it. And I saw how somebody else shot and he was holding for win to, to the left, you know, it's closer to the left edge of the plate. And clearly I didn't do that. So everything I was probably sailing off to the right. So again, it was a learning experience. Um, but then there's some stuff that I did well. I was happy with how I dialed. I, I, some of the stages I actually shot by holding instead of dialing. So that was, uh, good. I was happy with that. And, uh, yeah, so, so overall it was, uh, it was just great. And I'm like, I learned a lot like, between the two days and I'm looking forward to, I got some more matches coming up. Um, part of that is I signed up for another match in the U S it's going to be in Catskill, New York, uh, in a couple of, uh, mid May, I think. Yeah. Mid to late May. Nice. And, um, what else did I have? I signed up for, um, a Nipsic match. Uh, this coming weekend at my local range in Montreal. And uh, I think that's, I think that's it for me, but I see like, I'm pretty, I'm pretty uh, stoked about this rimfire stuff. I'm really, I'm really enjoying it. I think the whole um, experience of it and stuff like the, the way the stages are, the way things are run. Some of the stuff is different from Ipsic. I was, uh, I was, I think I was saying to Angel before the show, like, Ipsic has like all the matches I've attended have uh, like ROs and scorekeepers that are just working, right? They're shooting either the day before or, you know, the morning of or the morning or the afternoon. Whereas this is all like the squad completely works, you know, the, the RO, the spotter, the timer. And so it's a little bit more, not as, um, well, you're not- self ROed. Yeah, it's so far. So it's not as structured and rigid, mm-hmm. but I mean that in a good way and a bad way. So um, is there one person on the squad that's kind of dedicated as like the head RO for the yeah, squad? It's, or, it's, supposed yeah. to, it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be. So hmm. and I and I understand because like with again with it, most IPSC matches I attend, like there's usually like different squad times so you can have people that you know will go there and they'll ro in the morning and they'll shoot in the afternoon or vice versa whereas this like we're starting at you know you do the zeroing at a certain like you know 8 8 15 and then you know by nine o'clock everybody's shooting so even the mm-hmm. match di- even the match director's shooting so it's not like you, you can't really have you know people dedicated just and you can't ask people to show up there just to work and and not actually shoot right so it's, yeah yeah that's I the still ch- couldn't see working a match and not shooting it. Yeah. No, it makes sense. It makes sense. Yeah. See, I'm the opposite. I can't, if I'm working a match, I don't shoot it. Cause I, my, my head is not enough into one or the other to do a really good job at either. So I default to doing a really good job at running things. And then I just, I may as well not shoot. <laughs> Cause it's bad. only, I only do that for like outreach stuff. So if it's a ladies day or a family day or something like that, I'm not going to shoot. And I, yeah. I will never shoot on those days. Hmm. Uh, but if it's a, if it's a match, well, I'm going to shoot yeah. it. Yeah. 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 Like, I didn't expect to do my best at my own matches, but, I and I would just run around, make sure that everything was good, and then shoot the stages at my own pace, jump in with random squads, and just oh, I haven't shot that stage yet. Got mm-hmm. some time. Okay, I'll go shoot that stage. Mm-hmm. Yep. Cool. Yeah, that's it for me. All right, let's get into upcoming events. Uh upcoming events. Join a Maple Seed. Check out mapleseedrifle.com slash events to find events in your area. They are selling out quickly. Uh so check them out. Find a three-gun match at threegun.ca. And then there's going to be the EOSC Summer Blast Ipsic Level 3 match. Spots are available for Thursday, July 27th. Registration is on practice score, as registration should be for everything. Mm, yeah. Great. Cabin Fever at uh, Wapiti Shooters Club in Grand Prairie. It's a sporting clay match this weekend, April 28th to 30th. Registration is on practice score? Uh No. Register oh. on site or uh, CNSCA <laughs> leaderboard. Something like on that. site's okay. On Just site's okay. Show, you show up Just to show site. Up. Uh, prelims Friday main event will be Saturday Sunday morning, and they'll have a bunch of games like probably five stands, Super Sport, uh, Canadian Field Sporting, all that good stuff. 
All the usual stuff. Cool. Uh, Saturday, May 6th is going to be the ORA CQC rifle pistol match uh, at Borden. Signups are on practice score. As and they should uh, be. So for the for the CQC this year, where uh, Andrew's doing some, Andrew Vincent's doing stuff a little differently, so we're going to mm-hmm. do a rifle match, hundred yard rifle match, like a rifle marksmanship match in the morning yeah. at eight thirty briefing. Ten o'clock, we're going to do a CQC briefing, and then we're going to do the CQC rifle and pistol. Or if you don't have a handgun because Trudeau sucks, then you can shoot the whole thing with a rifle. That's fine. Um, and then we're doing a service rifle in the afternoon, so we're doing three matches in one day. It's going to be a long day. Sharing on Discord because I know there's a lot of Ontario people that want to shoot three gun, and this is kind of close enough. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> three guns under the day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's move on to news. Uh, the first one we have here: firearm sentencing is this country is a joke. Uh, I think I put this one in. Man caught with loaded handgun at Burnaby get them all gets stern warning from the judge. Uh, they did get <laughs> stern <sentenced>. warning. <laughs> Yeah, they got sentenced, but uh, when you read more about it, you're like, oh, this should be more. Did, did so, he do the finger? Like, yeah, boys <laughs> will be boys. <laughs> he would have had to do the finger, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Did, well, he, did, he already have, did he already have five prohibitions? This That's why it was stern oh, this you time. Know it, Dave. You know yeah. it. You know it. <laughs> he, was, he was walking around uh, a mall with a loaded handgun tucked into his pants. Um, Smoking weed. In the parkade, you idiot. Like, what the hell? It's good thing criminals are stupid. Carrying a loaded handgun, I think I'll just go light up where I'm not supposed to and get a ticket. And then uh, Run yeah, away, gets into a fight with like, the cops oh, and pulls yeah. a handgun. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And gets a stern warning. <laughs> but not not his first offense. Oh, and two lifetime firearms ban. Had a significant yeah. related record. We're going to hit you with another one of those. You're going to have so many conditions that we can't check yeah. on, but uh, you're going to have so many conditions. Yeah, you don't like that the last one, so we're just going to keep piling them on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My favorite my favorite part of this whole thing is that the defense lawyer pointed out that uh well they they asked for 4 year 4 and a half years, the defense lawyer asked for 3 years and the defense lawyer pointed out police misconduct. They were not appropriate that they stopped him. So that was unlawful. The bit where they got in a wrestling match and he pulled a handgun on the cops, that should probably just be <laughs> Well, that happened afterwards. They didn't know that he had the handgun. So like there, there is a there's a bit of a point there, but at the same time, like I don't want to give cops too much uh too yeah. much room. But at the same time, a lot of the times when they're hassling people, it's because those people are trouble. And and I think that yeah, um they know who they are. A lot of the, a lot of the times they're not trouble, but in this case, absolutely, with that they were, and they were hassling the right people. And uh, <laughs> the, the, don't worry, guys, this guy's banned from the mall too. He's banned from Metro Town Mall. He's gonna have to take counseling. He's got fifty to, hours ooh. of community service. So hopefully, yep. it's at your oh, and, you know, and, and the, the counseling. Okay, <laughs> the, counseling. Yeah. the counseling. He's got the counseling. Fifty hours. Yeah, community. Yeah. Is that service. that? Is that that poetry that Trudeau was going to say was going to rehab all the terrorists coming home? Something like that. Oh, and another lifetime firearms ban. So this is the (laughs) third one. Third time is the charm, as they say. Well, the judge says next time. Next time it's going to be like at least five years. (laughs) (laughs) But it could be 10 or 12. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Sure it will. What a joke. What he a joke in, indeed. He got enhanced credit for time served and six months in jail, two years of probation. So don't 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 try and shoot a cop with your illegal 45 for at least two years and a day, okay, Junior? Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> I think that's fair. Love it. Love it. No, I gotta accelerate to this stuff. If it was too slow, we wouldn't be able to see like it'd be frog boiling to kind of a thing, right? Yeah. It, when true. it comes fast like this, people are like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, what the fuck is going on? How, why are you letting these people out of prison? They're going and stabbing people. Yeah, they grew in prison for stabbing someone. We let them on a release. The release had conditions that the police couldn't enforce. Don't have a knife on you. Oh, how are you going to, how are you going to enforce that? And he goes and stabs another person. Oh, well, why, what's going on here? And we're finally figuring out, oh, wait a minute. We did bail reform in 2019. 
And yeah. now we're seeing the results of it. Oh, yeah. this that no. wasn't a good idea. No, uh, that is a lie because I was listening to Mr. Trudeau today at one of his press releases, <laughs> and he mentioned that this is all because Stephen Harper made it easier to get assault weapons. Yes. Plus the NRA. Sorry, Dave. Sorry, I, I don't know. What does to do with right, a handgun in his belt? <laughs> <laughs> what does it have to do with stabbings in Toronto? But he said that assault well, weapons, assault weapons, quote unquote, were the problem there too. And the concern well, assault not, style not knives. Yeah. There, there was an assault style knife. I just know okay. we, got, we got more news items to go through, guys. <laughs> There's more stuff to get mad at. Don't anything, worry. anything positive, Adriel? Uh, the spring yeah, next one is on. How about that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Go, go okay. shoot a turkey. One of our guys at work posted a picture. Him and his granddad each got a got a great big tom. So I, I wish there was turkeys out here. I can't believe like like tur turkeys groceries practically. Like there's not a lot of processing to work to do there. Just take the feathers no. off of it and smoke it, right? Or, or do something. Yeah. Like deer is hard. Moose is moose and elk. Like that, that's a job. You got there's there's a lot of work there. Turkey. <laughs> got it. Like freeze it. Save it for they, Easter, I guess. Do they okay, literally not exist one. in Alberta? They were supposed to have like Merriam's turkeys in the south, but I've never seen any. Oh, you need to stock them. That's what we did in Ontario. No, freaking things are everywhere. It's crazy. It's a draw in Alberta for Merriam's. Oh, yeah. yeah. But it's actually it's turkey seen. season here. I can get two two each in the spring, and I think I got another month left of turkey season. Oh. I just got to find them. <laughs> oh, so good. So good. Anyways, uh, Mo, you're asking if there was good news. Uh, that's it. Uh, Marco's working <laughs> with the CS AAA to buy industry guns. Um, oh industry, dear, industry doesn't really want to. So uh, that announcement was this morning. The CS AAA put out another bit of information. They said the Liberals totally misspoke when they said what they said, which is uh, par for the course. Oh, Marco uh, like if, shouted out to him like four times during his little press release. It was uh, he just kept going on and on about it. But Love the guy it. lies about everything. So it's yeah, like, it well, I, I, I believe him when they, when they say that, uh, that they misspoke, I believe them a hundred percent. And yep. now they know what happens when you co offer or cooperate with the liberals, they take it and bend it out of shape yeah. and make you. I don't even know how much they cooperated. I think they might've said like, yeah. how's it, how are people going to get paid for these kind of things? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, okay, we're going to, like maybe they sent an email back and forth a couple of times. Yeah. Uh, if I were to show this, this is the statement they made. This is not my email. Uh, someone else emailed them and be like, yo, WTF, like what's, why are you guys working with them? And they said, no, they're, they made a misleading statement. We're just asking, as, acting as a buffer for businesses that need to uh, offload unsellable uh, inventory uh, so they don't go under. Um, and in fact, some other, um, stores have, it's, have straight up said, nope, we'll just sit on them. We don't need to sell this stuff anytime soon. Good. Yeah. Good. I do RDSD. feel bad for the people that like the little shops that are sitting on a ton of money and you know, that, that sucks. Well, yeah. If, if you're, if you're sitting on like, uh, you know, 20, 30 grand of AR 15s and, and, or, uh, uh, XCRs or something like that. Oh, that wouldn't mm -hmm. take hardly like 10 of them. There's 10 like them. 30 yeah. grand. Yeah. That's just sitting there that you're paying to warehouse. Never mind. So, yeah, there's, uh, I understand why, uh, they're, uh, they're saying that. A lot of people are losing their minds. I posted a thread about that on CGN and it's just full of people <laughs> hating on the CSSA, CSAA. A yeah. over this. So. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I don't know what, what it was said or what was done. I know that the, that Marco lies like he breathes. So um, I, I really have to just sit back and wait because. Yeah. I do. Yeah. I did wonder when he kept doing the love in stuff. Like he just, if you watch the whole thing, I watched it. So you didn't have to, it was horrible. I hate that oh, guy. Oh, the, fir the first, the first like to lay it. into it. Oh God. And we're going to ban these things. As you know, they're made to kill the most amount of people. In the shortest period of time, that's why we arm our cops with them, <laughs> and our and our and our fish cops. You know the conservation <laughs> officers and the guy standing behind me. Uh, there's three guys behind me. Yeah, they've all got AR-15s. You know, in their cars. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, he said that line about weapons of war designed for the battlefield, specifically designed to kill the maximum number of people in the minimum amount of time. Kind of yeah. think my M and P twenty two and twenty two long rifle probably not that effective. 
Probably yeah. not that. Say the line, Millhouse. Designed exactly. the most amount of people the shortest period of time. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Freaking said it over cool. and over and over and over. On over. Yeah. And when he did the CSSA thing, he did the same thing. He mentioned he's like, or CS AAA. Doesn't roll off the tongue. He's throwing the uh, love out for them like five times, doing their part, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, is this is this actually a real thing? Or was this like dividing people? Like I, it's, it's just it's dividing people. Dividing yeah. people, guaranteed. Yeah. Yeah. And they're trying to get their amendments. But so let's let's move on to that one because okay, yeah. RDSC said, you know, they don't like it either. They're not, they're not selling anything, but we got lots of ground to cover here. Let's uh let's get to it. Um Okay, two other announcements uh, today or like within this week here. Uh, Trudeau Liberals abandoned plan to expand banned gun list, but the new amendments are coming and they're saying that's going to be definition based. So they're yeah. rather than adding a big bad list, they're just going to put a definition in. What? That it almost makes sense. Yeah, no, right. That, no, you don't. You no, don't want we that. We don't want no, the definition. No, we, I know we don't. No. Magfed no. semi-auto. Yeah. No, all I know. Banned. That's but it does of, make yeah. sense rather than trying to come up with stupid lists. I think they just did yeah, the listing was, because okay, it gave them guns to ban next time. Banning by names. No, I don't want their definition. I just, it's a lot better than naming than, yeah. it makes more sense yeah. than it takes a, If Centerfire takes a magazine, ban, it bans. It's still going to suck and it's, it's still going to wrap up a bunch of stuff that's used for hunting and still have an uproar because yeah. you'd have no idea how to draft this up. Well, and and um, yeah, they I think they did the band band by name because it's uh, it's good politics. Mm -hmm. We're banning the AR-15. We're banning the, and they can point to some stuff. They're, we're banning the RPG-7. Finally, <laughs> taking these <laughs> things off our streets. Yeah. Finally, my T-55 was safe. <laughs> Those RPGs were just filling up the gutters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, no, I think politics, I think it though. it makes sense to do yes because you can name them and then you can go look at this, look what we're banning, and you can post pictures of what you're banning and look at this yeah. evil. Plus, it gives them lots of guns to ban at the next election, and you can just keep doing that infinitely because manufacturers are going to design new guns because that's what people do. Duh. They're good. Yeah, they're going to design them within the laws, which is going to cause a loophole. Well, yeah, which comes to our <laughs> next point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Adriel. Also, Singh saying that... Uh, so Singh made an announcement today that was uh, a little bit kind of ambiguous. He said that they're going to uh, introduce an amendment to the gun ban Bell C-21, and it's... But rather than the ways that we've tried before, they're going to try a new technique that's going to target manufacturers, Canadian manufacturers. Yay! Finally, we'll stop those gun profiteers. <laughs> it, it really odd, like uh, I guess nonsensical, odd. Like, like uh, yeah, I, I don't know what. Like, okay, yeah, target all the Canadian gun gun manufacturers and, and you know put them out of business. Okay, but like there, we're a small market. We're big enough that Americans will change some of their gun designs and sell them down here. They'll change barrel lengths to sell them down here. Caltech sure. does, has no problems putting a slightly longer barrel on a gun and sending it yes. down here. Is that a loophole gun because they bring it down here? Are they going to be bringing like 180s? Like, I just assume he doesn't know what he's talking about. And the actual <laughs> letter of what he's got coming in is going to be what the liberals have. It sounds good to their people. Look, we're doing something. We're targeting these evil gun manufacturers, mm. right? Because there's been a bunch of stuff lately that, oh, these gun manufacturers are evil. They're inventing loophole guns to get around our laws, and we have to stop them because the children know they're yeah. gone. I've, I've got a spicy one when we get to new gun stuff. That, uh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> maybe it was a cause. Maybe maybe this is the cause. Yeah. But uh, Oh, uh, Marco did uh, bring up the uh, Mass uh, Casualty Commission. And he's like, the Mass Casualty Commission recommended that we do uh -huh. all the stuff we'd recommended before, and they just copied. But uh, amazing yes. how that works. Isn't that amazing? Right? Stunning, stunning, I tell you. He also mentioned the NRA at least three times that I could count. He kept saying that, you know, the conservatives choose to work with the NRA instead of victim <laughs> groups. I'm like, what in the fuck are you talking about? The NRA, really the NRA is not even anything. relevant in the US anymore. Like, <laughs> no. just nonsense. No. Like, it is, but it's oh, the uh, scary it's, thing, right? I know yeah. a lot of friends that don't know a lot about guns that are just all upset. You know, oh my god, the NRA! Yeah, yeah. They, they're lurking behind <laughs> every know. bush. I wonder if they know he's just lying. 
you know that Marco's just lying about all this stuff? No, all of they it. have no idea. There's, there's, there's none of this stuff that he's saying yeah. is, is true. No. And that's the frustrating part when you actually know. And that, to me, is the worst part about all this, other than them stealing our stuff, violating the charter, lying, demonizing us. But other than that, the worst part to me is that when you actually know that he's outright lying, it diminishes your like i have little i have no respect for government left and i have very little respect for the law because why would i like when i look at this crap and the guys running the country are just outright lying outright lying like not even trying to hide it and they stand up there with a well marco can't help but smirking every so often so you know he knows he's full of shit same as trudeau but mm-hmm. it, it diminishes people's respect for the law and for the, for the country itself, like when you do that crap. And then it makes me wonder, what else is going on that I don't know as much about or I'm not paying attention to that is also bullshit? And I suspect it's pretty much everything. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's frustrating that they can just spew complete and utter nonsense and bullshit and go completely unchecked. Unchecked, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, it's like uh, well, that's like with lots of things though. If you if you listen to the news talk about something and you're an expert in that thing, yeah, you know that they're not they don't know what they're talking about. And Mm -hmm. same with thing with politicians, it's all just a good political play for the liberals and the NDP. Like dunking on gun owners is a good play. They don't have any gun owners that uh, that vote for them, and the ones that do uh, are just fooling themselves as to uh, what they're voting for. So. Well, you uh, keep pushing other people inside front of that wolf. You, at least you get eaten little. At least you get eaten last. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah. Wayne's saying that uh, you can tell they're trying to push things before the ruling on the OAC comes in two months. Yeah, maybe, maybe yeah. that's what this is. They are trying to get C twenty one through, and they will get it through because uh, the Liberals, NDP, and Bloc all support this. Yep. Yeah, NDP actually wants right. more than what the Liberals are bringing. Yeah, like saying when he was doing his announcement, he's like, just to be clear. We want to ban our handguns and a ban on assault weapons. Just like, you're, you're like, absolutely. So they, they just want something that is politically uh, palatable enough to pass. They don't want, they don't want to lose any seats. While differentiate they, while them it. from the liberals. So, I, I would just love, like, this is, this is a perfect example. Gun control is a perfect example of the bullshit asymmetry principle, where it's so, so easy to just throw bullshit out there, and it's so, so hard to refute it. Like when he makes a statement like that, you could have like a two hour conversation over what do you mean by assault weapon? Who is the handgun ban going to affect? How will it stop crime? What are you going to do about this? What are you going to do about that? But nobody's going to get into that conversation when you've got that 15 second soundbite of we need to ban handguns and assault weapons. Boom. Well, done. Did you hear the court case? It doesn't matter how effective it is. It's that they're trying. Yeah, I heard that. They have an opinion. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah, they um, formed their own opinion, so it's it's okay. Uh, Awful. One thing that was kind of interesting, um, while uh, not to bring American politics into play, but while Trump was in power, <laughs> is there there was a lot of uh, news stations that were running uh, corrections. They were like, okay, check, fact checks, and some of them were extremely biased, but some of them were like, yeah, he he, he t- tells a lot of lies, right? So it's very easy to like say, oh, we went through his speech. Here's a lie. Here's a lie. Here's a lie. And it was something that was kind of interesting. Snopes is doing and that kind of thing. The problem is like the the politiz- politicization and uh, play that those get aren't aren't quite right um, because something like Marco's speech or, or Trudeau's speech about some of this stuff would would be a, a great match for a fact check that actually oh, yeah. got some play. That wasn't just preaching to the choir. I could do that. I could get like twenty thousand views from uh, Canadian gun owners who would be like, oh yeah, Trudeau's lying about it. Yeah, okay. But they already knew that, right? Yeah. I, I won't get any play with people who don't know that they're lying out their out their ass on all this stuff. Nope. Because they, yeah. they don't It'd be care. It would be interesting if the oh, media yeah. actually started calling him on it, other than, you know, the Sun and the National Post once in a while. It'd be kind of fun yeah, if like C B C or the Star actually Preaching to the <laughs> choir. Preaching to the <laughs> choir on that stuff. Yeah. On be nice if yeah. C B C just sat down and yeah, did it like they do with Trump or some of those other guys. Just uh, you know, who cares? Fact check left and right, regardless of your bias, and just see who's full of crap. You know, but never happened. No. It'll never no. happen. They're they're editors and and the the kind of people who want to work at a really super progressive media outlet aren't the kind of people who want to fact check that kind of thing. I saw a graph on their funding and over a billion dollars comes from government funding for their annual revenue. 
69 percent thank you elon if you happen to be listening elon that was hilarious yeah. thank you <laughs> he's not listening okay let's yeah. move on uh CCFR legal fund donations. Oh, this is over. Uh, but uh, hey, if you want to help out with paying for all their bills, because I know it costs more than whatever dollars. they raised, uh, send an EMT over to finance at firearmsrights.ca. Let's get to new gun stuff. New gun stuff's fun. Uh, need a new boomstick? Bullseye North is Canada's shooting superstore and is a proud supporter of the CCFR. With a wide selection of guns and top trending gear for any shooter. They got free shipping over 200 bucks. Some exclusions apply, like ammo and that kind of thing. Subscribe to their weekly newsletter to get first access to their hottest deals. And their hottest deals, boy, this week they got a smorgasbord of all sorts of weird stuff to look at. So we're going to look at it. <laughs> They've got the uh, combo pack of uh, 9mm and uh, ammo can, which is kind of nice. they got some funky looking, I think these are throwing axes, right? Looks like it with a pack of three, yeah. Pack of three throwing axes. When the when dingo set. doesn't go down with the first one, what's that, Mo? I could use a set of throwing axes. Yeah, I know a lot of people in Alberta here who have a throwing axe or a throwing knife set up in their backyard. <laughs> it's popular yeah. here. <laughs> well, you can't set up a range in your backyard, so why not do that? And you can't uh, in most municipalities. You can't have a archery range in the backyard nope. either. Nope. But nope. you can throw axes. <laughs> <laughs> Defensive axes, they don't go as far as an arrow that's in uh... defensive axes. Uh, you wing one off the board or something like that, you can get him into your neighbors. Uh, yeah, you know. their dog is in danger. Uh, assault axes. Yeah, Bullseye's also got some uh, dog e collars, which work great if your dog doesn't have super thick fur that the, the stupid shockers don't get through. You know what they work awesome. real good on? They work real good on kids. No fur to get in the way. Just saying. <laughs> Uh, mine are too old. They'll call CPS. Uh, they've got uh, Butler Creek mags. If you're looking for a mag for your Savage A17 or Savage A22, they've got those at 25% off. And they've got a bunch of other stuff. Wow. Oh, cool. Bubba Ultimate Lifestyle t shirt. They got some of those. They got some like other wear, case guard, all that, all kinds of stuff. Nice. Let's move on to some weirder stuff because that wasn't weird enough. Uh, North Silva's bringing in the Smith and Wesson. PFC. This is that side folding nine millimeter. Oh, it's so fucking ugly. Oh. <laughs> that's like that's like worse than Keltec ugly. I don't know how they manage that. It's it a looks side like some... folder. It's not symmetrical. That's why it's so ugly. But it literally yeah. looks like something somebody made in their garage. Like where did like they find this thing? Stock just looks. Well, there's the, they got two mags in there, so yeah. they're trying to they're trying to appeal to the practical side of people. You can't yeah. put a, a sight on it, but uh, I'm throwing up in my mouth uh, for good reason. For good reason, yeah. it's compact. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not as compact as a Keltec. <sighs> Anyways, they're going to be like so. Keltec shipments seem to come in like once a year. All the sub two thousand sell out. So, like for the rest of the year, what do you buy? Well. You might, <laughs> if you really want to buy something, you might be stuck getting one of these. I don't have a gun that's hideous enough, and I can't get a Keltec for at least six months. Oh, M and P to the rescue! Yeah, Thank you. Awesome. Oh, 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 there was one more gun I wanted to add on here. Yeah. Speaking of hideous guns, oh. I'll uh, I'll add it as I'm talking about this next one here. But uh, Mag Dump uh, 22 is finally coming down. The nice. world is correcting. Uh, the world is healing. Mag Dump has a Gila 22 Super Extra SV. This stuff's fantastic. Very accurate, 480 per box. Oh. Finally, finally, it's getting down there. It's getting down there. Uh, how far in our Facebook chat do I need to go to find the gun I'm looking for? Uh, it was the uh, no, come on, where are you? You guys know, oh, there it is. Do they have any left? Oh, they're out of stock. I should have bought oh. one when they oh, came up. One. Okay, oh, but it no. wasn't six ninety nine. It was, was three ninety nine. It was four hundred yeah. bucks. Northern Elite Firearms had the high point nine millimeters for four hundred bucks. That's a good deal. It's a good deal. <sighs> it's Is an it? ugly gun. Four hundred. Is it a good deal? <laughs> okay. What else? What are the PCCs you got? What are the PCCs you got? Ruger, Ruger PC Carbine, eight hundred bucks. It's half it that price. Yeah, and with good reason. Good reason. <laughs> but still too much. I won't argue with you. I won't argue with you. 
We have a couple uh, of people that bring these out to the range. They do work most of the time. Um, mm -hmm. They don't look like they should work, but they do work. Mm -hmm. But they're horrible, and they're just like for four. Uh, just, well, you do you. Oh, and I'm going to pick my Tavor up and use that. Speaking <laughs> about PCCs. <laughs> <laughs> oh god uh, oh. i'm also looking at these because i think they're hilarious but uh, tundra supply has the heritage arms cool. rough rider rancher carbine this is a 22 lr 60 inch barrel it's a revolver it's a it's got a revolver with a stock and it's got a a, a barrel on it wow wow 4.99 <sighs> she's she's pretty I, but you can't hold it with your like. Where, where do you put your left hand? You can't put it out front because yeah. you get like spall and like lead and crap and carbon up the side. So you shoot it one handed. Looks cool in Looks your shoulder. Cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I was talking to some guys and they're like, "Oh, that Nork 308 stuff. You can't get it anymore." Yeah, you can. Fully Outdoors has that stuff. Didn't uh, head over to Ukraine yet? Eh? <laughs> cool. Not out of it yet. Produced 1995 <laughs> Cold War ammo for you. A little past Cold War, but not much. So a buck around. Start. Buck around with taxes. Under. Under a buck around for 308. Yeah, with taxes. You're a buck around. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, moving on. Oh, I was on there. I uh, just search for... No, John X. And uh, has that uh, those primers. They had them this morning when I was checking. Oh, are they sold out? They sold out a small primer. No, they still got them. Small pistol primers. Uh, Tenda's got the Cam Pro Giant X ones. They're 92 bucks. And if I search Cam Pro and then I go to the next page, they'll show me the small rifle. And they're way cheaper for whatever reason. Those small rifles got like a thicker cup on it. Same thing otherwise. Maybe there's just less people buying it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a small rifle, 84 bucks per thousand. Nice. I got some. They're still in stock. You guys can too. Ah, this is, I think this is what caused the acceleration of, uh, of all the firearms legislation we're seeing right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> True North Arms has this uh, Trudeau must go limited edition custom WK 180C Gen 2. Now, I personally, I think lasering uh, political stuff on magazines is cringe, uh, but this is so high effort. <laughs> that it's like it's looped back around. I like yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that is pretty good. Great, great. Yeah, they've it got is like, adorable. <laughs> look at the, what they've done to the magwell. They've, they've cut out like little prison bars in the magwell. They got, got a little lock keyhole. Key key yeah. yeah, the keyhole is a nice touch. Yeah. It really is. Well, in case you're nice confused thing. on what it was. Hmm. And the nice thing is with that, you could just take your mags and paint whatever figure on there you wanted. Yeah. You could paint anybody yeah. on there. You, you could have like a bunch of with mags your with political full... statements. <laughs> yeah. You'd have like the full cabinet on there and just changing mags. They're all going to jail. <laughs> <That'd be> awesome. <laughs> That's great. Uh, it's not even That's that cute. much more than a regular WK 180. This is the Blem. Uh, this is the Blem version here, but like 1750. I don't know what a regular Gen 2 goes for. But it's not that much more. It's got a cool skeletonized lighter weight magwell. Yeah. Yeah, that's fun. <laughs> it's fun. Yeah. I'm sure the uh, RCMP oh, I, has uh, has been giving photos of that around. Somebody will be upset about that. <laughs> I missed a couple here that you guys had just added. So just give me one second here and I'll fire those over onto my other screen. <clears throat> Looks like you got a couple of SFRC things. Share screen. This one. Lockhart Tactical LTAC. Raven Modular Calip. Okay, who put this in? What is it? And wh why do I need well, it? Well, Mike just put it in comments. Oh, and I looked it up and it's a felt fed 22 long rifle. Fun. <laughs> Disintegrating link? <laughs> <laughs> Probably not, hey? Uh, what? We'll ship shortly after Raven 9. Okay, the Raven 9 is out. Transform your Raven from 9 to 22 LR belt fed without any tools in under 30 seconds. What? It's yeah. linkable. 100 round 100 linkable belt rounds. included. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Hmm. Notify yeah. me when available. Click. That's that's cool. <laughs> that's an expensive cool. caliber conversion kit. But yes. uh, $2,000 Canadian. For, for an upper. Does it come with a barrel? Wow. That's come with a barrel. 
how do you shoot uh, it without the because it's it, the the Raven nine is a nine millimeter, right? Yeah. Ejector bolt and Colt included with it. Barrel not included in basic kit. What do you got to buy it? Just buy like a twenty two barrel. Do you put your AR barrel on there? It's a twenty two. Yeah. Go go grab one of your AR barrels that's got like a slow slow twist on it. Stick it oh, on there. Oh, the the platinum kit is complete, includes barrels. And that's the only kit you can select. Oh, that's why it's eighteen hundred bucks. It's got everything. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Belt fed belt fed twenty two is coming to you soon. Okay. Based. Very based. Very cool. Uh, SFRC has the Kodiak Defense nine millimeter KD nine MSR. I think Josh has been uh, had one of these things trying to make yeah. it work. Yeah. And I think we've got some emails from Josh too. Uh, Solio Doors also has nine millimeter cellular and bellet for 780 bucks for 2000 rounds. I ordered some of that. They've got 124s and 115 grains. I ordered some 124s on Tuesday. They showed up this morning. I ordered it wow. Tuesday night. Well, they're and pretty free shipping. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, Mark. Fantastic. An hour and a half north. But yeah, free shipping. Yeah. So yeah, why not? So good. All right, let's get on to the main topic. For our main topic tonight, we have Travis Mitchell uh, to talk to us about a few different things. He's uh, very involved in the firearms community. Um, welcome to the show, Travis. Thanks for having me. So um, I got to exp actually experience one of the things you're involved in, uh, which is you were the match director for the um, CRPS match at, in the Avonmore, um, Avonmore area of Ontario. And uh, it was a lot of fun. And uh, so I was curious, how did you end up uh, getting involved in that, in the actual sport and then running your own match? Uh, that's funny. Um, so originally I wanted to shoot a CRPS match, but there were none around. And, uh, you know, having a young family couldn't really spend weekends traveling away from them. So I messaged Rick and said, I have a property. Do you think we can uh, run a match there? He said, yeah, sure. Guess what? You're the match director. <laughs> that, that's how I got sucked into it. So that, that was uh, like 2019. We so held one, one and a half and more. And then last year we had three. And this year we're having another three. So, so previous to that, had you... Had you shot a bunch of like precision rimfire matches, or that no, was never, of, never, <laughs> never, no, uh, no. He uh, was taking on a totally inexperienced match director, but that that was okay. It all worked out. Wow, that's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, and uh, like, are you regularly shooting other matches at uh, different locations? Typically, not really, unless they're in Eastern Ontario. Um, okay. I shot uh, an NRS match last year that was in Eastern Ontario, but really, the only matches I've shot are the matches that i've directed which is uh, it's a challenge unto itself because you're busy directing and, and shooting yeah I'm, I'm, I'm sure i want to talk to you about that all the like how much how much time you put into it and when you when you actually start prepping for it with like uh, stage design and the logistics of everything yeah it's uh it's a lot of work so that, that's what the stuff that people don't see right so i usually start a month or so before the match start writing down some ideas i listen to a lot of podcasts watch, watch a lot of videos so i i keep a file on my phone of different stage ideas that i have and then i'll try and come up with something and you know over time i've learned to try and balance with different types of stages so once i come up with the kind of the mix that that i want i, I get all the stage descriptions all written and then um you have to make sure all your target sizes are appropriate for the distances you know you I usually try to shoot for between three and five MOA. And then uh, after that, we set up. So usually I'll have a, a couple people come set up, set up with me. Uh, one of the shooters, Brandon and Patrick, that we were out the weekend before putting all the posts in for about four hours, putting all the targets up and all the props out. And then uh, usually, uh, probably the night before, I'll go uh, do a final setup and in the morning, I'm usually there for six-ish to get things ready and uh, try to be the first one there, get my rifle zeroed before everyone else comes in and the craziness starts. Yeah, I'm sure. And and you're trying to balance, too. I, I'm, I'm assuming you're trying to balance making it challenging for, like, the top shooters and then uh, somewhat fun for the new people like me to show up and, you know, actually hit a few targets, right? 
Yeah, for sure. It's trying to find that balance. I usually try to have uh, probably 10% of my targets. They're, they're going to be a challenge for the top guys to hit. Mm-hmm. Then uh, usually 50% should be reasonable uh, for for most people. And then there, there's a few that are on the larger side. Um, like I, I ended up upsizing some targets right before the match because we found that they, they might have been a bit small. So the uh, we want everybody to come out and you know make the steel go ding. Yeah, no, for sure. That the fun part is hearing hearing <laughs> and, and not hearing silence behind you when uh, you don't hear the impact, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, I thought that was that. Was it stage one that had an interesting, uh, the decision stage? So um, you had set it up where the shooter had an option A and option B. And option A was you had, you could earn all your, I guess, 10, 10 full points on one single shot. I think it was at 273 yards. Yeah. 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 It was a one third Ipsic at 275 yards, which is about eight inches tall, six inches wide, give or take. Okay. Off of a pretty solid prop. And then uh, the option B was you could just run the normal stage for a maximum of eight points off of you're shooting off some tires. So if you missed on option A, you can have a maximum of five shots on option B. So it's not like you're going for 10 and you miss and you get zero. You can still make up some ground. Uh, So some people weren't a fan of it. I thought it generated a lot of excitement. Yes, I, I actually, I was going to say to you, I liked it because there was the decision to be made and there was the gamble of going for it. So I, I actually liked it. So, Yeah, well, because you can get a two-point spread, right? But two points for a lot of the top guys makes a difference between winning and losing. So if you decide to play it safe and you lose by a point, you look back and say, should I have taken the risk? Or would, have I, would I have lost by three, for example? But I don't know. I've never seen... Uh, excitement like that when somebody made an impact. So I don't know if you saw on the uh, the CRPS yeah. Facebook page, Hugo, the the youth shooter. Mm-hmm. There's a little video of him taking the shot, and he didn't know he hit it, and then all of a sudden you hear a hit, and the excitement that that yeah. score was <laughs> awesome. Right? Yeah, I, I was I was standing there, and yeah, there was a little bit of delay because you're, you're waiting, you know, you're waiting for the sound, and you think he missed, and then there it was, and and uh, yeah, everybody was going crazy. It was so much fun. Yeah. So. And even like whenever other shooters were, were making hits on it, everybody was super excited. I'd never seen that level of excitement at a match before. So some people say, you know, it's not, it's not uh, focusing on the fundamentals. You're introducing a little bit of luck, which I suppose you are, but yeah. you can say that on any stage. And I think the balance of the excitement and buzz that it generated kind of makes it, makes it worth it. Well, I, I could tell you somebody on this podcast had luck in their favor because he also made the shot and I held it dead center. And I have a feeling that the wind completely stopped when I pulled the trigger and that bullet went straight down the middle and hit. I can tell you the other guy on the podcast that took a shot at it missed. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know I fluked it, but I, and I was thrilled that I hit it too. So it was like the highlight of my day. So anyways. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, there's a bunch of uh, different types of stages. I try to add variety. So, some stages is one target and six positions and 12 shots, right? So you got to be moving. There's other positions where I did, you know, the the reset stage where you have to start offhand. With a, mm-hmm. It's a pretty generous size target. It's 12 inches at 100 meters shooting that offhand. And then if you missed, you had to reset on it standing. Mm-hmm. Again, right? Yeah, so I thought I, that was a good stage, too. Yeah. And I like the um, I like the construction site with the six the six positions and various like heights and stuff. I thought that was clever. Yeah, yeah. You, so you, you're challenging all the different fundamentals, right? From there, you're going from prone to standing, and you you really got a boogie if you're going to get all twelve shots off in two minutes. Hmm. So. Yeah. So uh, overall, you were happy with how how things turned out. Yeah, it was. So last year the highest number of shooters we had was 40, 48 this year we got 49 so we beat our record and uh you know had the weather held a, a little bit better I'm, I'm, it held out compared to what it was supposed to be but we probably would have had about uh, 55 we had about six no shows so yeah everything went well everyone was safe 
I think everyone had fun. <laughs> so yeah, it, it, was, it was a it was a good day. Yeah, it wasn't uh, it wasn't a downpour. It was more like a light rain all day, but. Uh, we had some muddy spots, though. That was that was interesting and fun at the same time. <laughs> yeah, we. Uh, well, I looked at the forecast the day before, and it said, "Oh, it's going to spit a little bit." Then I woke up at five on on match day and looked at the forecast, and it said we were going to get twenty millimeters of rain in two hours. I was like, "Oh, that is going to be wet." Yeah. <laughs> so, but luckily, it it missed us, and uh, it. It got a bit greasy, but it was wasn't too bad overall. Yeah, I don't I don't think it spo- spoiled the experience or anything. For I take people. that over the wins that we had on Saturday. <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, so your same uh, that same location hosted a, a Rimfire Academy the day before to introduce uh, uh, new shooters to the sport, and uh, I attended that as well, and I thought it was it was a lot of fun. So, uh, what app are you guys using? Can't use uh, Streelock anymore. So geoballistics, geoballistics. Yeah, that's that's what they were they were getting us to uh, work with. I guess they're owned by uh, Vortex now. That's... Yeah, they incorporated it into that uh, new rangefinder that gives you a ballistic solution with the press of a button. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, yeah. The the competition academy was pretty good. We had like ten ten students yeah. and five volunteers, so it was. Uh, I think people learned a lot. You know, you got to work I on did. the fundamentals. You got to figure out your dope. And, uh, you know, I think that that's how you grow the sport, right? You get people's confidence up. Because as soon as you say competition, people get intimidated. Hmm. Yeah. But I think that you'd agree, Mo, that the atmosphere is quite welcoming. People are out for a good time. It's, mm-hmm. not, it's not an old boys club like some other shooting sports where, you know, everybody wants you to do well. There's help where you need it. It's uh, it's definitely a good time. That's yeah, nice. yeah, no, it's it's definitely on. I, I would say it's on the younger side, the crowd. Whereas, like, I I do Ipsic, and I think Ipsic is a little bit of an older sport, and I think it's maybe the the cost factor, also the the barrier to entry is is more involved, right? So this is a little bit more, um, I would say, easy to get into, but there's less steps, I guess, to to be able to get to it, right? All the pistol sports are going to get older and older and older. Oh, there's that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Unless things well, are reversed, yeah. Yep. Or they just outright ban them, and then we won't have to worry about it. Oh, that's ter- That's a terrible thought, Dave. So don't 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 wish that they don't get older, uh, <laughs> Adriel. They might not. So here's hoping that everything gets reversed, and we can go back to peacefully enjoying our property. Yeah, yeah. that would be nice. Yeah, one thing I like about like the these matches and also the academies is like the the loaner program that they do, and uh, there's a lot of sponsorship behind it too to to help people. Because I think there was even a guy there on Saturday, his gun was not working. I don't know what the issue was, and basically it was like he was handed a loaner voodoo, and then next thing you know, he had a big smile on his face, and he was like, <laughs> "I don't think he wanted to give it back." Again. <laughs> I, Let's I, just say I, that. Yeah, his, <laughs> his wife not so much, but he had a big smile on his face yeah. once, once she sees the bill for the new voodoo. Yeah. Yeah. Say a week later, his wife's mad at him for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Credit but no, it, but it's <laughs> nice. Uh, the way I see it, like somebody can just show up there and they're going to be like, here, here's a gun, here's a bag, here's, you know, here's what to do. Yeah, and I think Stealth Division, you get a mentor, so you get coaching. They'll, they'll give you all all the elevation data that you need. They'll they'll help you through positions. So, like I said, yeah. Oh, that's yeah, nice. Yeah, it's, uh, it's welcoming to the new shooters, which is good. That's that's a real problem with with competitions. A lot of competitions I've found you show up and you're kind of like people will kind of help, but like you're kind of on your own a lot of the time. If you're brand new, hopefully they stick you with somebody who really knows what they're doing. But a lot of the like that level of help, that's awesome. Yeah, it's uh, it's a really good way to kind of get over the barrier because I mean, I know I remember my first couple competitions. The the timer goes beep and you're like, ah. Uh, uh, what, what, do, what, do I do? <laughs> what, what was my plan? You know, <laughs> having somebody to be able to guide you through and maybe give you gentle reminders on, you know, take this position, come up with a stage plan with you ahead of time, stuff like that. It's a, it's a good way to grow the sport. Yeah, that, that reminds me, like uh, pre-match after you guys uh, 
did the intro and the safety and stuff. I, I can't remember if it was you or Rick said, okay, so who's who's attending their first match? And a bunch of people put up their hands. And then it was like, okay, what squad are you in? Oh, seven. Okay, who's in squad seven? All right, somebody experienced from that squad, like, you know, basically volunteer to, you know, shadow this person or give them tips and stuff. And we had we had someone like that in our – I mean, I'm new too, but uh, I guess this guy was there for his first match, completely first match. And then he got instruction throughout the, you know, Kind of like um, what to kind of do, get ready and stuff for for each stage. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's uh, and the divisions are are nice too, right? Like you can shoot production, and there's price limits on what you can shoot, so you don't you don't have to be shooting a four thousand dollar action with a three thousand dollar scope on it. You can show up with pretty well what you have as long pretty well as long as it's not a tube fed lever gun. It, you're you can the barrier to le- to entry is fairly reasonable into the sport and you can still be competitive single shot cooey ace <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> no? there's still some guys who would clean me with that <laughs> uh, uh, so you have a you have a couple more matches coming up this summer yeah we've got uh, there's gonna be another competition academy in june i think it's the 23rd 24th whatever weekend that is so the competition academy is on the Saturday, and then another match on the Sunday. So I usually do Saturday matches, but it's nice to be able to to make a weekend of it. Mm-hmm. And uh, we are there spots available for that for that session? I I think that that one was sold out as well. So there's okay. usually t- ten to twelve spots, but uh, sometimes people drop out. So everything's on practice for keep an eye on on that. And you know, if spots open up, sometimes Rick will announce it on the the Facebook page. And then uh, we're hosting the Nationals in September. So that'll be a two-day match in at the end of September. So that, that should be fun. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, Rick is having, I think, a match in Stittsville in two weeks, another competition academy on the Saturday, then a match on the Sunday. So it's nice to see um, Eastern Ontario having some action. So. Like I said, for the longest time, I was the only one running matches, so it's, it'll be nice to run a match that I don't direct. Yeah, to you be able to show up and shoot. Yeah, just go there and no worries. And <laughs> yeah, every once in a while, I show up to a match where I'm not an RO, and it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I still end up you, ROing, but <laughs> yeah, of course, yeah. you too. Eh? <laughs> yeah, there's just not the uh, you know the responsibility of having 50 people there and then afterwards you know you're you're there for another hour and a half two hours after everyone's gone cleaning up tearing down and you get home just absolutely gassed on sunday night (laughs) and then time to start your week right so it'll be nice just to show up and shoot so don't you make don't you make the attendees like tear down for you yeah they tear they they bring all the steel in and all the props in but i still there's a little bit of cleanup to do after i I take all the steel home So uh, get, getting myself organized and loaded up and stuff like that. So it's, like you said, all, all that extra work that the people don't see behind the scenes, it, it's nice just to be able to show up and shoot. <laughs> yeah. I was going to ask you if those are all your props and stuff that you uh, bring back and forth. I, I leave all the props at the field. So some of them are new. I, I built a, a few new ones this year. They, they all stay out there. The only thing I bring back is the steel. I don't want that growing legs. <laughs> yeah, that stuff doesn't stick around if you leave it. <laughs> no, yeah, try and keep it out of the rain. Don't want it to rust, right? <laughs> so, yeah, I, I cut a bunch of new steel this year. So at at work we have a plasma cutter, so I was able to design a bunch of things on AutoCAD. So all those animal targets that you saw, I, yeah, I did all those, and it's uh, nice to have a resource like that, so you can give people a variety of what they're shooting at instead of a square or a diamond all the time. Right? It is yeah. nice. Yeah, well, for the next one, I'm hoping to cut another sheet and let's see if we can come up with some some different types of steel. I was thinking of doing uh, like all the suits for cards. Uh, some last year we had some Star Wars stuff, so like stormtroopers and Vader and stuff like that. So nice. Do you have, do you have to hit the stormtrooper target, or do you put other targets around it and you hit those? <laughs> yeah, we, we need the red guy no shoot. Star Trek, yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. Um, did anybody else have any questions regarding the, the competition? Because I wanted to move on to something else with Travis. 
So, Travis, was Mo as charming in real life as he appears to be on the show? Oh, Listeners want to know. Absolutely. Oh, <laughs> God. <laughs> Handsome and charming, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so you also had, you also have a business, uh, that's, uh, connected to rimfire precision or any kind of shooting. Do you want to tell us about that? Yeah. So I started, um, uh, a sewing business called Boreal Outdoor Sporting Solutions or Boss Gear and, uh, started this time last year, well, January ish last year when I started getting into things and I wanted to have, uh, a bag I started because I didn't want to pay 250 bucks for a bag. So I said, I'll get a sewing machine and try and make my own. And you know that, that evolved into my wife saying, you should make a business out of this. So <laughs> in, my, in my spare time with, uh, you know, I work full time and have two kids and my wife and, you know, doing things with the family. So when I'm not doing all that, I'm now sewing and <laughs> trying to run, trying to run a business. So, so it's, uh, yeah, the, I wanted to be able to offer people, uh, you know, a, a little bit of a lower barrier of entry price wise Canadian product and something that, you know, is going to be durable. And, uh, yeah. So I started making some shooting bags of different types and, um, I've recently upgraded my sewing machine. So I'm not just using a $200 singer heavy duty from Michael's. I've got the proper commercial sewing machine, which makes things, makes life a lot easier. And, uh, yeah, things are going really well. So, Good. And so people can purchase uh, this stuff off your website and they're also offer them, offering them uh, to retailers too now, correct? Yeah. So you can find them at Tessero right now. Tessero has their own color. They're a, a blue color, kind of, you know, that color like that. But the, uh, the other colors are uh, coyote, camouflage, green, black. So I'm working on establishing a dealer network. Um, soon I'm, I'm hoping to have some stuff out on the west coast and uh yeah there, there's been a good interest and i've gotten a lot of positive feedback on, on my products so i'm happy you know it's uh <laughs> it gives me something to do at night which is great yeah your passion into some money pardon turn your passion into some money drive yeah. the passion out of it <laughs> yeah exactly, yeah, exactly. Uh, that's exactly the, the case eh? I, I just spend money in this sport on these sports. I don't, I don't get anything out of it. Yeah. Well, I, I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I bought a, I bought a cube from you yeah. and, uh, and I also have this, what do you call the, the, the classic small classic? Yeah, yeah. The classic. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's kind of the, the Armageddon gear game changer style bag. I call it the classic bag, you know, and, um, I also have, a rail bag, so something that's mounted on, on an arca rail, and uh, I think you said the cube. It's like a space filling pillow. So I'm also venturing into the the world of retail. So I, I started selling tuners from Spearhead. I'm, I'm trying to focus on more Canadian companies, and uh, going to have some shooting glasses from Fortnite and some gun oil and stuff like that coming in. Oh, so, nice. Yeah. And you've you have some. Uh, maple seed slings. I do, yes, yeah, slings as well. Yeah. So uh, I don't sell too too many of them, but I figured I would. I I, I have all the material in stock. It makes sense to make them. Mm -hmm. Web webbing and a couple of sling swivels and some triclides. Yeah, they're pretty easy to make. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, it's it's going well. Um, People seem to, to like the products. I mean, who knows what they say behind my back, but to my face, they, they say that they like them. So uh, I'm getting good feedback. I uh, One thing I do a bit differently is I try and double stitch all of my seams because I, I've noticed a lot of failures that you see. Um, you'll see them right, right in the crotch of the bag here. So what I do is I'll, I'll double, anything that's an open seam is double stitch so that if your your stitches fail, there's a backup to it and yes. you can get, you can get it repaired. Um, so try, try and do things a little bit differently because you know, the, the other guys do a very good job. You know, they're, they're obviously an industry standard for a reason, but you know, try and offer a Canadian made alternative that is available and 
hopefully has a little bit of a lower price point so that people, you know, more people getting into the sport can spend more money on ammo, stuff like that. <laughs> I should do a tripod caddy. That's been on my list to do for like, three months. <laughs> and I've been telling people, yeah, yeah, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. So it is on my list of stuff to do. Um, there's a few other things as well, like a scope cover. So I, I made a scope cover before the weekend and luckily we got the rain that I was able to try it out. It worked flawlessly, kept, kept all the water off my, my scope, which is good and dope cards and stuff like that. So the, the tripod caddy is, uh, something that's going to take some time to develop because it's a, it's a lot of sewing and, uh, I got to figure out the right design for it to be different from what's out there, but still functional. Do you, do you have to buy an even fancier sewing machine now? No, this should do everything. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. Um, and then you're also involved with uh, QSF. So what's your what's your role with uh, them? With them, CUSF. I've done everything there. So I've been volunteering for them for about four years. And I started off just helping run programs and kind of worked my way up. I was vice president and executive director for a while. We, we got to a point where we could hire our, our first paid position. So we have a paid executive director now. And uh, I'm on the board of directors and I'm the treasurer at the moment. So I've uh, kind of handed the reins over to, to some other guys for the day-to-day -day type of stuff. So it's a, it's a great organization. And our goal is really to get university age students or college, college students out, introduce them to the shooting sports, really nice. promote safety. Um, and the response has been wonderful you know the, the industry is really supportive of us um you know cabela's and vortex and beretta um and savage that they, they've been our our main four sponsors and that they're what really enables us to do what we're able to do so uh, yeah the, and surprisingly enough students are really really interested in the shooting sports because most university campuses are kind of kind of liberal places of learning, right? Not so leading, you, yes. You, you wouldn't think that the, the shooting sports would be so popular, but you know, we, we have uh, more than 300 members in 12 clubs across mm. the country. That's and, awesome. Uh, yeah, so all of our members are fully insured. So whenever they have range days, they have the same insurance as, say, a CCFR membership. And um, yeah, so we, we run uh, sports leagues. So we have a usually a fall shotgun tournament and we have a shotgun league throughout throughout the year. So we're, we're registered as a amateur athletic charity. So it's the same thing as say hockey Canada hmm. where we can give uh, tax receipts for donations, but that's because we run a league throughout the year. And right now our, our national tournament is on. So they, they do it by satellite. Everybody goes and shoots their scores and submits them and we, we accumulate them and, and pick a national champion and you know we we partnered with maple seed so we, we've run a few clinics with uh project maple seed which is always well received by the students and uh do, do our project maple seed challenge usually in november where we're we're having them do kind of you know the will attend clinics in october and then maple seed challenge in november see it, see what they retained nice and, um, yeah some other things that we do are um we have a PAL funding program for students who don't have their PALs, so they can get up to $100 towards uh, getting their PAL or our, our PAL. Excellent. Is, yeah, you know, that because it's pretty expensive. I know in Ontario, you're more than $300 to get mm. PAL, and that's a lot of cases of beer for a university student. Yeah, yeah. So to be able to, uh, to offset some of that cost, we'd like to increase it over time and, you know, hopefully at, at some point have fully funded PALs. Um, that that's our our end goal to be able to put through you know hmm. say a hundred students a year with fully funded pal pal courses and you, you're you're investing in the future of the firearms community right mm -hmm. but, but yeah like that so, now you don't want to keep yeah. somebody away because they they say well they, I'm interested in this how much is it to get my license oh it's three hundred dollars they're like oh no it's okay <laughs> and then you got to buy I'll, the guns after <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> that's not even getting anything <laughs> but, but once most people invest in getting their pal they're more likely to stay involved right yes where yeah. if it, you say you know I, I attended a few range sessions in university twenty years ago that was fun so we're we're trying to get people in at, at an age where you know they're getting off you know getting away from home starting to make their own decisions finding their own interests and 
you know, it's, um, it, it's really important work and I, I love volunteering for them because I, I really believe in the cause. So that's very and, cool. um, yeah, but recently we started covering CRPS and ORPSBs for, uh, for competitors. So mm -hmm. nice. they can come out and shoot for free. We have a, a rifle loaner program that we have set up. So Savage is part of their sponsorship has given us a bunch of 22 rifles and MDT gave us rings and accessories. Uh, Bushnell gave us some scopes and um yeah we're so we have rifles in cases ready to go and entry fees paid so students really have no excuse no they're not showing yeah. up. <laughs> like, they literally just have to show up and shoot i was uh i was helping run the uh the ontario council's ontario council of shooters booth at the uh at the um Toronto Sportsman Show, so I was handing out T-shirts for you guys and telling people a little bit about it. But I, I was disappointed nobody was able to make it to the booth to run to run it because I yeah. Yeah, there was a lot of interest. I think you would have had quite a few people. So maybe next year, see you there. Well, that, that's one of the tough things that we we struggle with a little bit is volunteer retention. So lots yeah. of people say, "Hey, yeah, I want to volunteer for you," but there's only so many people that we need to bring people out for a range day, right? We we need the things like the accountants, the tech people who know how to run the CRM behind the scenes, the guys who are willing to you know, spend a day or two at, at the Toronto Sportsman Show who know enough about the CUSF, who can talk about it and and provide that feedback. So you know, we're always looking for volunteers for stuff like that. If anyone's interested, I think they can email info at cusf.ca. Uh, or there, there's a also, a, you can go to the cusf.ca and there's a contact page there. You can send in information if you're looking to, to volunteer. Nice. Yeah. Other than the executive director, everybody is volunteer uh, related running, running. So it's a small but dedicated group. And um, yeah, it's uh, COVID kind of hurt us quite a lot, not being able to, to run events, but we're, we're back, uh, you know, full speed ahead. And uh, this year was a really good year. We had lots of engagement. It's the only other thing on that is we have our AGM coming up in uh, either late May or early June. I think Adriel was at our last one where we do the sports shooting conference. So we, we have a bunch of people from different parts of the industry giving presentations on you know, different aspects of the shooting sports, ranging from, you know, if you want a career in the firearms industry, well, here's some people for who work for, you know, Savage at the executive level or engineers or gunsmiths, you know, the, these are all the possible career options. and. We had uh, Linda Kiko on as a, a keynote speaker last time telling her Olympic story, which was super interesting. So I'm looking forward to that one. It's usually a, a pretty informative uh, six hours or so. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, anybody else have any questions for Travis? Oh, well, sounds like you got your fingers in a lot of uh, a lot of pies there, and uh, yeah, just uh, just happy to talk to another person out there who's doing a bunch. Uh, it's, <laughs> so I counted there. You run CRPS matches. Uh, you're a director at the CUSF, and you make gun bags and gun equipment for your own business. That's all he does. That's just for fun. That's and all he, that stuff's just for fun on the side. You also and have he a probably has a real job too. I also have yeah, a pretty demanding day job. I'm, I'm a geologist by by trade and work a full-time job. And like I said, balancing the, the family time, that's the, the biggest priority for me, right? Yeah. So just everything. So, yeah, so yeah. luckily I have a very supportive team around me here at home, which is which is great. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that uh, Boss Gear can turn into a good Canadian branded company that can really contribute to that. Like I said, lowering the barrier to entry into the shooting sports for people, so. Awesome. Good. Good. Um, thanks for coming on. It's been uh, great to talk about all this stuff. Yeah, I appreciate you guys having me. Yeah, we look forward. Uh, I, I look forward to the next uh, matches and events and stuff. So I'll definitely be out there. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to seeing you. Thanks. Thanks, okay. Travis. Thanks, Travis. All right. We'll talk to you guys later. Take care. And thanks again to Travis for coming on and telling us about all the stuff he's into, which are many. Which is everything. Uh, everything. Everything. Yeah. Let's get into uh, listener feedback. Uh, have we been missing any comments on Facebook? I see a bunch of stuff. I, I think don't think we up. did. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. It looked like a heat gun. Yeah. That, uh, that Lockhart tactical one. Yeah. Cause it was just the side, but that's just because it's the upper. It's just the upper that they're trying to solve for that one. I loaded it out with all the toys and it was 2300 Canadian. Hmm. Mm-mm-mm. Wow. A little bit pricey, but, uh, is there another belt fed 22 you can buy? Just like off the shelf. Not to my knowledge. Yeah. Not to my knowledge. Let's get into the emails. Uh, I'll take this first one from Ed. Hey, guys. Would you happen to know if the Mesa Tactical Urbino pistol grip stock for Benelli M1, 2, and 3 would fit a Gersan MC312? I don't I, know. I think it will. There was some sizing. Like, I was looking at putting a Benelli M2 stock on the Gersan, and... You would have had to shave around because it was just a little bit wider at the receiver, I believe. If my memory serves me correct. With a belt sander, Dremel, and JB <laughs> Weld, anything is possible. Yes. <laughs> uh, Mo, do you want to take this next one from Josh? Sure. Uh, so, yeah, so from Josh, I slam fire crew. As you may have figured out by my previous emails, I like to use my farms to point out failure just to determine their reliability. The attack pictures are my Henry Golden Boy in 22 LR after 3,231 rounds. It still hasn't failed. It was still accurate and smooth as silk. I just felt bad for it. I had other 22 LRs run well past 1,000 rounds, but none with over 3,000. I will buy as many Henry firearms as I can afford in the future after seeing this performance. A shout out to my coworker Liam, who, who says he enjoys cleaning my farms. After this one and my PC carbine with 2,000 rounds of 9mm, he may change his mind. He commented the 9mm the nine that the muzzle brake was clogged solid. I'm just going to uh, scroll through some pictures of his <laughs> Henry because they're disgusting. <laughs> oh. Wow. Uh, this is testing to failure. Oh, my goodness. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> that you see it like peeling up here <laughs> wow. wow it's just the crud the crud oh, no. is peeling up that That's would be very go. satisfying to clean though oh yeah oh yeah That's you like... something <laughs> <laughs> it would be very satisfying to clean mm, bring wow. your jackknife and just like carve away at the at the, <laughs> at the crud yeah. this extra oh, is this an extractor ejector what is this thing why does it look so I think that's broken the extractor. or messed up. Why is it pointy like that? I, it, I think it's just right. a flake and just how the picture was made. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Anywho, uh, that's but a, you said that's it a still very ran pretty... at this point too. Yeah. Yeah. It's got to be a good gun to to run with that amount of crud, like twenty two LRs and maple seeds, three hundred rounds. A lot of them even start breaking 200, 300 rounds. Some of them don't even make it past hundred before they start like jamming. Well, lack of lubrication, uh, gumming up like like a, a gummed up chamber, and they just stop stop working. So for something like this to keep running for thousands of rounds is crazy. Impressive. Kyle, do you want to take the next one? Sure. So, hello, Slamfire hosts. I heard your email from Tony on the latest show and the discussion on Steel Challenge in Canada, so I wanted to reach out and say hello. I'm the Steel Challenge Master Director at BTSA, where we have a very active steel program and host the Canadian National Steel Challenge Championship each year. While Steel Challenge may not be as popular as IPSC yet, it is growing rapidly for a lot of the reasons you mentioned. Matches are set up in 30 minutes or less, and the only consumables are the occasional piece of 2x4 and paint. Steel Challenge matches are a great intro to the competition shooting world, allow a wide variety of firearms, including pistols, PCCs, and rimfire, and are beginner and youth friendly. <clears throat> if your li listeners are looking for a steel, challenge, a steel shooting club, we are compiling a list on steelchallenge.ca and have a Facebook group, Steel Challenge Canada, for shooters looking to get into the sport. If one of your hosts is interested in coming out for a steel challenge match at our club as a field correspondent, we'd be happy to show you the ropes. If you'd like to chat further about steel challenge, starting a club or shooting the stages, please let me know. Dan. Nice. You're muted. Uh, the, the comedic timing is, is just all off now. I was yeah. saying we should have that guy on the show. To talk we should, about we that. should have him on. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's a great topic. Yeah. Would great be. topic. That's a great match too. Steel Challenge is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I guess I should go to the one on Thursday night. So I have something to talk about next week. That's right. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Yep, that's how it works. That's yeah. how it works. If, your, if you uh, that's your up. assignment. You're on assignment. Yeah. <laughs> We've already reached out to Dan, and Dan is going to be on the show next week to tell us everything about Steel Challenge. Awesome. Should be good. Very Very cool. The chair go. All right. <clears throat> YouTube comments. Kyle, do you have these up? Should I bring uh, them up? Two seconds. Okay. We'll just uh, hum the the theme to Jeopardy as you're doing that. Yeah. Okay, so where were we? <clears throat> this is a Gersan yeah. comment. <laughs> well, we actually, uh, yeah. Oh, there's a couple of them there now. Oh boy. Oh yeah. So if we had one from Tony, this is a Gersan comment <laughs> on the uh, last episode. And we did have two comments on the Gersan testing review. Uh, one guy says this is mostly a waterfowl gun. So one and eighth heavy will be the minimum go to the light stuff made for clays. I'm sure is mostly made for break action, double guns. And I disagree. Um, you get down to seven eighths, yes, absolutely. But one ounce, not nah, you're you're fine. Uh, one ounce another one. Yep. Uh, LOL, comparing a brick wall to his shoulders. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And uh, then we had a whole bunch to our last episode. Sammy, Tracy is being too optimistic. The judge is a sellout. We've already lost. Only solution is a supportive government. Uh, Ian says liberal government, liberal government lawyers and government lawyer trying to influence the judge's decision and judges biased and needs to rescue herself. We need a panel of judges here. Yeah. Recuse, recuse herself or recuse. Yeah. Yeah. Step out. Yeah. Uh, Sean says take away government and the people will prosper quote from Ronald Reagan in 1972, I guess. I don't recall that one, but uh, Stonecutter says, this is a great episode. I'm a bit frustrated with such a pivotal case for the law-abiding firearm owners and by extension owners of property, why the mainstream media showed zero interest in this case. Zero. Mm -hmm. uh, Canadian guy says, great show. Glad you had Tracy on the podcast. Uh, Daniel, hi, SFR team. Great show again. By the way, I'm in favor of a Discord channel. And that was it for last for this past week comment. Good stuff. So we got we got a Discord channel now. Yeah, we are work we are currently working on building it out. So it's there, but we just gotta build it out yet. Yep. Yeah. Uh we will have invites for that. I don't know, soon ish. Yep. Yay. Uh, what people bought from our Cabela's link. So we will do one of those once April is done. We'll kind of review that. But uh, if you want to buy something from Cabela's, you're going to buy it online. Go to our website on the side there. It's like buy something from Cabela's. If you buy it through that link, we get a little bit of little sweetness off that. And we'll uh, either uh, clap very loudly at your purchases or, or laugh, uh, jeer at them uh, once a month. And uh, now nah, mostly we'll just like, talk through it we'll try to figure out what you're doing i'm um, just waiting for somebody to just buy a lot of fudge, <laughs> fudge. a lot of fudge. fudge a lot of lube can you buy that <laughs> can you buy the fudge online that would be awesome if you could i don't know <laughs> can i get some of the what? caramel popcorn <laughs> yeah fudge and nuts. no not fresh <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> ship please <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah uh, thanks to our supporters on Patreon and Player. If you'd like to help support the show, head on over to Player is the new name for Utreon, or head on over to Patreon. Find us there and subscribe. If you'd like to email the show, send us an email at slamfireradio at gmail.com. And let's get out to the shoutouts and recommendations. Kyle? Uh, I would like to shout out uh, the, the whole crew at ATC Shooting Sports for fun day. Out shooting sporting clays in that. And looks like good Nice facility. 
my shout outs to Tristan for his excellent stage designs uh, for the uh, Sherwood Park matches. We've got some like new people, new, not new people. We've got some people who are uh, taking more, uh, like a more active role in, in some of the three gun clubs around here. And they're doing like a way better job of stuff. Like everything's more organized. We've got like matchbooks, like everything's getting better. It's all, it's all uh, fantastic. So great job guys. Uh, mine is to uh, Travis and uh, Rick that hosted the events this weekend. And uh, again, I already mentioned but Vortex and Voodoo for um, sponsoring the Rimfire Academies. And uh, and they're also sponsoring shooters to actually come out and try the different sports or try Rimfire shooting. So thank you. Fantastic. That's nice. awesome. Dave? Shout outs to all the RSOs out there because everybody's getting ready and the match directors setting all your stuff up and making your evil plans for the year. So thank you in advance for all the work you do because, you know, nobody else is going to say thank you. So, you know, there you go. <laughs> I'll say that. I had a couple of I ITs coming out to the time. Maple Seeds. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Because... <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's nice having help at uh, at those things, and uh, yeah, and all those people are great help. The kind of people who are willing to help are usually the kind of people you want to have helping you. Yep. Finally, uh, w once it's ready, and I think it's almost ready, join our Discord Discord server. We'll probably link that on the website and some other places. I don't know. We'll find out. Yeah, once we get it up and running, we're doing that. Even like same thing I do with the email and Patreon and player. I'll post a link in the chat as we do it as well cool nice check us out on gunners of canada like us on facebook watch us on youtube and player join the ccfr and we'll see you next week see you next week good night kelly good night kelly so if you have any comments or questions for the show please send an email to slamfireradio at gmail.com now go grab a gun and shoot something when the talking is over, it's time to get a gun.